This is Trax FM. Playing your favorite music 24-7. Experience the excitement right here. Right here. Right, 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 right here on Trax FM. This is Tracks Momentum on a beautiful Monday morning, 7th of March, 2021, every, 2021, 2022. And every Monday is on Tracks Momentum. We highlight on health issues, which is health on tracks. And uh, today's topic of discussion is going to be, can medicine actually damage our kidneys? And joining us via telephone this morning is uh, Mr. Ong Ping Singh, who is the pharmacist at the Penang General Hospital. Uh, Mr. Ong, very good morning to you and welcome to the show. Hello, good morning, Mr. Wan. And uh, how how are you doing, Mr. Ong? Is everything okay on your side in Penang? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, you today are going to be talking about uh, medication and also how it could possibly damage or maybe not damage our kidneys. But uh, first up, before we get started, uh, how long have you been a, a, a pharmacist at the Penang General Hospital, Mr. Ong? A bit of a background of you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have been in Penang General Hospital as a pharmacist for around 11 years. Okay, 11 years. And uh, prior to that, you've been in the same field. Uh, Mr. Ong, today we're talking about um, kidneys and medication. And uh, first up, what could you please explain to us, help us explain briefly, what is actually a kidney disease in, in, in uh, your perspective? Uh, I'm sorry, I... Okay, you got a very bad connection, Mr. Ong. Uh, maybe, can, can you hear me loud and clear? I, I can't hear clearly. He, he cannot hear us clearly. Mr. Ong, can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, what is kidney disease in, in uh, your idea, man? Okay. To answer this question, first, we need to recognize that the kidneys are organs and know their function. Our uh, kidneys an essential role in the body's health to the most simple. Kidneys that function properly are critical for in good health. Kidneys function 24 hours a day to perform their important roles. So I think the function of getting toxins and waste products from the body and excreting them in urine comes from everybody. So it earns the fluids chemicals and salts in our body bloodstream. Okay, uh, Mr. Ong, we're, we're so sorry. We have to interrupt you right there because you've got a very bad connection and uh, we can hardly make out what word you say. We're going to call you back and we're going to continue this discussion, yeah? Uh, this is Tracks okay. FM. Bon Jovi, Bad Medicine. And yes, uh, we are having a chat with our our guest on the phone line, is Mr. Ong Ping Singh, who is the pharmacist at the Penang General Hospital for the last 11 years. Uh, we had a bad connection. Let's hope that everything's okay. Mr. Ong, can you hear us loud and clear now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, Mr. Ong. So back to our discussion today. Can medicine damage our kidneys? So uh, first question I ask you is what is a kidney disease? Because we could hardly make out what you said earlier. So could you please uh, repeat the uh, the answer to that question, Mr. Ong? Sure, sure, no problem. So to answer this question, first, we need to recognize that the kidneys are organs and know their functions. Our kidneys play an essential role in maintaining the body's health to the most optimal level. Kidneys that function are critical for maintaining good health. The kidneys function 24 hours a day to their important roles. I think the function of removing toxins and waste products from the body and excreting them in urine are well known to everybody. They also balance the chemicals and body and bloodstream. Not just that, the kidney actually is beyond waste management because they do more control blood pressure and rate blood cell production. Furthermore, our bones can form healthily because it activates the vitamin D absorbed from the sunlight. The kidneys are made up of very complex tissues and cells. Kidney disease is a condition when the kidney tissue has become damaged or the size of the strings. Kidney failure can be divided into categories. Number one is the acute kidney failure, 
which has a sudden off due to some insult or very bad and is potentially reversible and the insults resolved. The other type is chronic failure, a long term condition that can worsen over time lead to permanent kidney failure. We will focus on this second type of kidney failure today. Occurs progressively, slowly, from stage to stage five. Usually, it does not show any signs of symptoms until the condition of tissue worsens. Some individuals have no symptoms until they lose almost 90% of kidney function. This is really unfortunate because early detection of kidney disease and treatment is key to preventing kidney failure. The disease is irreversible as the kidneys are unable to return to their original size, causing the kidneys to be unable to perform their proper role. When the disease the patients have to undergo dialysis. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, Mr. Ong, uh, talking about kidney disease and dialysis, in Malaysia itself, uh, in your opinion, the situation of kidney disease, how bad is it or what's, well, what's it like here in Malaysia, Mr. Ong? Okay, the Ministry of Health estimates that in the year 2040, there will be 106,000 patients undergoing treatment, and among them, 30% or 31,800 is expected to people below 45 years old will have a negative impact on the country's social economic growth. Here, I would like to cite a statement from the Director General of Health, Dan Sri Dato Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah. A study detected over 8,000 new patients with kidney disease in 2018. This trend also shows an increment every year. Based on the National Health and Morbidity Survey, the percentage of patients with kidney disease in Malaysia has increased from 9.11% in 2011 to 15.5% in 2018. This figure is expected to continue rising if the factors that contribute to fail kidney failure are not addressed effectively. Wow. So, uh, Mr. Ong, um, what would you say would be the main causes of kidney disease and uh, what are the identifiable, identifiable signs of symptoms uh, which can lead to kidney disease? Because like you said, just now the stats show that sometimes people go without being at the kidneys, there's no symptoms until 90% of the kidneys has been damaged and only then it'll be a bit too late and you just mentioned that. So if you could share with us what causes kidney di disease and uh, what are the signs and symptoms of the disease, Mr. Ong? Okay, sure. Most people with kidney disease will not have symptoms because it does not usually cause problems until it reaches an advanced stage. Kidney disease does not tend to cause symptoms when it is at an early stage. This is because the body is usually able to cope with a significant reduction in kidney function. The kidney disease is often only diagnosed at an early stage if a routine test for another condition, such as if the patient has diabetes or hypertension, they go for a test and then they detect a possible problem from blood or urine tests. These tests include measuring both creatinine levels in the blood and protein in the urine. If it is found at an early stage, then medicine and regular tests to monitor it may help stop it from becoming more at once. If some patients who are more fortunate, some of the early signs can be observed, such as fatigue or tiredness, loses focus easily, loss of appetite, or they may experience difficulty sleeping and muscle cramps at night. Some patients may have swollen ankles, feet, or hands as a result of water retention and swollen eyes, especially in the morning. On the other hand, some may have dry and itchy skin and frequent urination, especially at night. All these signs and symptoms are not specific to kidney disease. 
please do bear in mind. And it is best to seek medical advice as early as possible to confirm the diagnosis. As to what causes the kidney disease, uh, like you have asked us now, kidney disease can occur in anyone, regardless of the age or race. Kidney failure is more likely, however, to occur with increasing age or due to diseases that interfere with kidney function, such as lupus, polycystic kidney disease, and nephritis. In addition, the kidney failure is also a complication of chronic diseases such as diabetes and uncontrolled hypertension. And what about the risk factor, Mr. Ong, that can actually cause uh, kidney damage itself? The, the risk involved? Yes, there are some individuals at higher risk. Diabetes is a leading risk factor at the Malaysian Dialysis and Transplant Registry in 2018 shows that 69% of Malaysian kidney disease patients are caused by diabetes. Other individuals at risk are those with hypertension, heart disease, or those who have a family history of kidney problems. However, it can also occur due to other diseases, such as genetic diseases, for example, the polycystic kidney disease, or autoimmune diseases, such as glomerulonephritis or systemic lupus erythematous, or more commonly known as SLE. Someone with kidney stones or any other conditions that block or reduce the blood flow to the kidneys also have high risk of kidney disease. In addition, the overweight is also among the risk factors. Therefore, if you have any risk factors, it is recommended to take record by attending medical checkups. I will also like to emphasize here that in proper medication intake can also cause damage to the kidneys. Okay, Mr. Ong, you know what? We're going to take a short break and come back because you pretty much explained to us about the kidney, the disease, the risk factors, the symptoms, the telltale sign. When we take a short break and come back, we're going to be getting down to the uh, nitty-gritty of our discussion, which can medicine damage our kidneys, and that's why you're here to join us. We'll take a short break and come back right after this, so don't you go nowhere. This is Tracks Momentum every Monday's Health on Tracks. Zane. Better. This is Tracks of M, Tracks Momentum. Every Mondays, we bring you Health on Tracks. And joining us via phone line is Mr. Ong Ping Singh, who's a pharmacist at Penang General Hospital. And we're talking today about uh, can medicine damage our kidneys? And we left you, uh, we explained, Mr. Ong explained to us about the kidney disease and uh, the situation here in Malaysia. Pretty much it's telltale signs that you probably might have a kidney disease. But uh, right now, Mr. Ong, welcome back. I would like to ask ask you the main reason here um what are the common medication errors that can actually affect our kidney function because i do know that too much of anything is bad and some medications will dehydrate the kidneys and cause the whole thing to go haywire your creatinine levels will just go off the chart you got to bring it down but what kind of errors in terms of taking medication can cause these things Mr. Ong? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say the most common mistake is the non compliance with the medication intake. For this question, I would just like to maybe correct some of the wrong concepts. Yeah. Like if you have diabetes or hypertension for a very long time, it would be the diabetes or hypertension that caused the kidney damage, not the medication itself. So the concept has to be corrected. Because some patients may think that the medication for diabetes and hypertension is causing the kidney damage, then they did not adhere to what they were prescribed. Then secondly, continuous intake of medication like painkillers in the group of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or we call it NSAID. These are commonly available in pharmacy. Uh, in high doses, advice or other situation may lead to the vessels and affecting the kidney function. Because these are easily available in pharmacy, so 
uh, agent or consumer can simply go to the pharmacy and buy and may take it for long term without seeing the doctor. So it is very uh, important to seek medical advice whenever you have conditions such as knee pain or any pain that you need to take a lot of medications. Uh, I'll give some examples of NSAIDs here such as ibuprofen, diclofenac, methanemic acid, naproxen. There are actually a lot. So taking all this in long term is not good to your kidney. Absolutely, Mr. Ong, because uh, in this day and age, this digital world, they've got the ultimate doctor, which is Dr. Google. They will Google something up based on what symptom they have, and then they find some medication, and then they go to the pharmacy. They buy these medication on their own, which is uh, sometimes some certain unresponsible pharmacies sell these uh, medication over the counter. But uh, there are also other things which are available in pharmacies and in the market, uh, Mr. Ong, which is... Uh, Supplements. There are tons of supplements and different products out there which advertise today. Hey, we can cure your kidney disease and cure other uh, health issues like your hypertension, your diabetes, which eventually could actually lead to the to, uh, to damaging your kidney. So, um, in your opinion, Mr. Ong, how can the use of supplements actually harm our kidney function? Because you've got to break it down, it's got to filter it out. So how in your idea, how, how can you actually damage your kidneys? Yeah, as you mentioned about the advertisement, I would like to emphasize here that not all advertisements are, are legal because you cannot uh, advertise about the treatment of 20 types of diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, cancer, seizure, asthma, uh, and so on. So uh, if some uh, med- medication products that advertise that they can actually cure any of these diseases, they, they might not be approved by the medicine advertisement board. So beware of this advertisement scam. And do keep in mind that the health supplements do not treat disease. The function of supplement is merely to increase, improve, and maintain our health. They are not medicine, and they are not a substitute for a balanced diet, do not take supplements based on your diagnosis alone. It's better to discuss with the prescribers and they need to understand that when the condition of the kidney has deteriorated, taking supplements will only add to the workload on the kidneys because they need to filter up all these uh, waste products plus the metabolites from the health supplements. Not only that, but there are also some herbal ingredients in supplements that are unsafe or toxic for patients with kidney disease. There have been some cases where they found out that the contents of the supplements have been illegally mixed with banned substances such as steroids or antics, and these may cause further damage to the kidney. Wow, that's absolutely scary, Mr. Ong, because uh, most of us believe what we see and these products being put on the shelves is very, very deceiving and very convincing. Lah. And especially people who sell products, they just want to make a quick money. But talking, you mentioned something about herbal and traditional uh, products as well. Now, what action should people, uh, uh, general public, take uh, if they want to try a product such as supplements um, or herbal medication is there something that you can advise who uh, all our listeners are tuned in yeah, first of all the consumer can check the products registration status including the medicines supplements herbal medicine and traditional products all these products must be registered with the ministry of health so how to check it we can check whether the registered products, these two things or not. Number one, the NAL registration number. This number starting with NAL and then a series of eight digit numbers. And usually it will end with an alphabet. This alphabet could be A, X, P, or N, depending on what product category. For example, like if you are buying a supplement like glucosamine, then uh, the number will end with an N. It will stand for natural products. Then, if a medicine product does not have both of these characteristics, the second one would be the hologram security label. So, would the 
product must have MAL registration number and the hologram security label. If they don't have these characteristics, then this product may not be registered with the MOH. Well, I'm sure... The patients and consumers, yeah, yeah they, they can also check with the MPRA website about the product registration status. As I was just about to ask you about the website, there is a website which you can actually punch in the product uh, registration number and to see if it's registered and it's uh, approved by the uh, medicine board. Uh, Mr. Ong, talking about kidneys, we are going to be celebrating the World Kidney Day. Could you tell us a bit more about the World Kidney Day this year and its significance just before we wrap up, Mr. Ong? Yes, the World Kidney Day is celebrated on the second Thursday of March every year. Yep. Starting from 2006, so for this year, it will be the 17th anniversary. And the date will fall on this Thursday, the 10th of March. So every year, there will be a theme for World Kidney Day. And for this year, the theme is Kidney Health for All and bridge the gap to better kidney care. The gap here would mean the knowledge gap of everyone, including the patients, the healthcare professionals, and public health policy makers. So this is a platform to raise everyone's awareness about the severity of this disease, and we should put every effort and resource to treat the disease and to detect it early. Actually, I would like to express my gratitude to the MOH Pharmaceutical Service Program and TransFM in providing this platform for pharmacists like me to share knowledge about the kidney disease. And hopefully, through this platform, it could at least, to the community level, reach the gap. And prevention is always better than cure. Remember this. Wow, well said, Mr. Ong. Thank you so much for the message, and uh, we'd like to thank you for your services that you've given us. Any last messages you'd like to send out to our audience who are tuned in regarding uh, kidney health, and especially since you're a pharmacist in terms of taking medication and to prevent kidney damage or kidney disease? Mr. Ong? Yeah, the most important one would be to always follow... Uh, what your doctor prescribed and if you have any question you can ask the doctor and pharmacist do not stop the medication provided by the doctor and also don't go to the pharmacy and continue taking the painkillers in the group of NSAIDs for long term or also don't self-purchase any traditional medication or supplements for long term as well without proper medical supervision so the proper medical supervision includes regularly take the test and urine test to review the patient's condition. So don't be thought to follow up. Okay. Always seek medical advice. Yeah. Always seek medical advice from professionals. Mr. Ong, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And uh, we would like to wish you a uh, happy World Kidney Day 2 coming Thursday. And uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mr. Ong. Okay, thank you very much. All right, that was Mr. Ong Ping Singh, who was uh, who is the pharmacist from the Penang General Hospital. And I'd like to thank you for those of you who've been watching us live on Facebook Live as well. You can follow us on social media. That's Tracks FM official. This has been Tracks Momentum Monday's edition of it. Health on Tracks. I'll come back to wrap it up, baby, before the news at twelve.